The PlayStation 3's legacy was set to disappear as Sony announced that they were gearing to shut down the digital storefront in July and as such there was a mass panic to scoop up all the physical games before the platform became defunct. Now that's been reversed but is now a good time to buy physical games? Welcome to Retronomics, the series that follows price trends in video games. And if you like this type of content, consider subscribing as I have more videos like this in store. It's free to subscribe unlike these PlayStation 3 games. I get all of my pricing from PriceCharting.com and eBay sold listings and the price data that I have is accurate as of the recording of this video which is April 19th, 2021. So if you're catching this a month or two later and saying to yourself, where the heck does this guy get all of his prices? Well, in the past. I get them all in the past. So if you're watching this in the future, welcome and make sure you subscribe so that you're the first to know if prices will go up, down, or stay the same. The PlayStation 3 is the third PlayStation and part of the seventh generation, and it was released the same day as the Nintendo Wii, and when it came out, it was crazy expensive. The first models could play PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games natively, and then eventually via software for both, then only PS1 via software. And the release of the PlayStation 3 was not good at all, but it was salvaged with the release of the PlayStation 3 Slim, which was a smaller model and only cost $299 instead of the $599 for its most expensive model. The PlayStation 3 is home to a lot of great games such as Heavy Rain, the Uncharted series, The Last of Us, Little Big Planet, and Metal Gear Solid 4. And by the end of its life cycle, the PlayStation 3 was actually a very powerful contender in the console war battle, and that gave Sony a substantial starting advantage for the next generation with the PlayStation 4. And as more and more people start to get their hands on the PlayStation 5s, the PlayStation 3 seems to fade more and more to the ether, especially since there are not really no plans to make the PlayStation 5 compatible with anything older than the PlayStation 4. And with the announcement that the digital store was closing, people made a mad dash to scoop up all the physical games which spiked the prices pretty hard. And it's a perfect storm, so let's take a look at some games. Puppeteer. Now this game was supposed to be the next Little Big Planet and it flopped big time. And for a while it was literally a clearance bin item for $15 new and GameStop was selling it for $4.99 used. And now people are paying $130 for this game. And this game isn't rare and it's arguably not a good game to begin with so I'd wait on this one. Azura's Wrath is another game that has tripled in price since November of 2020, and Azura's Wrath is a multi-platform title which means that you can get it on the Xbox 360 for almost half of the price, and multi-platform games on the PlayStation 3 didn't really sell well because of the assumption that the Xbox 360 version was always better, so multi-platform games on the PlayStation 3 go for a premium. I don't really see any difference personally, but the PS3 vs Xbox 360 flame wars on the forums at the time seem to suggest that the PlayStation version had a clearer picture but screen tearing during the action. But still, I wouldn't pay $70 for 6 hours worth of gameplay, so I would wait on this one. Shadows of the Dam. Now this one isn't going up as high as the first two that I spoke about, and it's made by Suda51 who was behind Killer7 and No More Heroes, so this might be a game that is sought after in due time. It's a crazy grindhouse style game with a bunch of potty humor, so if that's your jam, I would pick it up now. Lollipop Chainsaw. So this one came out during the zombie craze of the early 2010s and this game has a cute girl wielding a chainsaw with her boyfriend's talking head at her hip and you go through slashing zombies along the way. And this game was really hyped when it came out but I personally found the gameplay stiff for its time. It's a fun game but I wouldn't pay $52 for it when you can get the Xbox 360 version for a much more appropriate $20. Folklore is an underrated game that flew under a lot of people's radar, mainly because it was a launch year game and the PlayStation 3 just wasn't really selling well. And it's unlikely to be ported, but the prices are really crazy high right now, so I think it would make sense to wait until the price is much more to your liking, so definitely keep an eye on this one. 
3D.GameHeroes is a game that I don't think is as rare as people think it is. It has a boxy pixel art style reminiscent of The Legend of Zelda and you can create your own character or download other people's creations. The game has a perfect storm for its value to increase. It's made by Front Software and it's published by Atlas and the game has been on everyone's radar since it came out because there was a rumor that Nintendo nuked it because it was too close to The Legend of Zelda. I assume that this game will hold its value for time to come, but right now with a lot of listings being added to eBay, if you keep an eye on it, you might catch a deal on this. Yakuza Dead Souls. Now, the Yakuza series has been around for a while, but it has really hit mainstream in the past couple of years, so naturally, back catalog entries are starting to see an increase in price. And like other PlayStation 3 games on this list, the sky's the limit for this game currently, but if you really don't mind that ugly Peggy logo, the PlayStation 3 is region free, so you can just import this game for half the price if you really want to play it. El Shaddai is an action adventure game with an interesting art style. It wasn't really on a lot of people's radar when it first came out, but now it's considered a hidden gem. So you could probably feel comfortable buying it right now if the price is right, but if you don't mind which platform you play it on, the Xbox 360 version is significantly cheaper. Splatterhouse is a game that had hype when it was first released and then when it came out it wasn't really what a lot of people were expecting. And this game has always been kind of hard to find and it does contain the arcade version of Splatterhouse along with Splatterhouse 2 and 3 as unlockables which is the reason why I picked it up. And I think you can afford to wait on this game because it also is available on the Xbox 360. Silent Hill Downpour and Homecoming are Silent Hill games in name only, so I don't really think that they'll stay high for very long because eventually people will figure that out. The prices aren't skyrocketing as high as other PlayStation 3 games on this list, and since they're also available on the Xbox 360, I don't think that they're going to go too high in the future. Just keep an eye out for deals. Aquapaza is a game that has plateaus, then rises, then plateaus, then rises again, and it doesn't look like it will crash down to pre-pandemic levels. It's an Atlas game after all, and it's exclusive to the PlayStation 3, so you might want to pick this one up sooner than later. Fighting Climax is a game that I would recommend picking up right now if you want to. I don't think that it will drop or rise too much in the next couple of months. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax has a triple threat. It's a Persona game, and it's developed by Atlas, and it's on the PlayStation 3, so naturally it's going to have a high price. And Persona games are really hot right now, so this is one of the games that I would probably pick up sooner than later, but the Xbox 360 version is cheaper, and it might also keep the PS3 version in check, so just keep an eye on this one. King of Fighters 13. Now this is a legendary series, but it's not locked to the PlayStation 3. It's available also on the Xbox 360 and Steam, so the price might level off quickly compared to the rest of the series. I personally would wait on this one, but if you find it for a good price, snag it because it probably won't drop to pre-pandemic levels anytime soon. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. Now, I explained in my Dreamcast video that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is pretty hot right now, so all of the games are going haywire. However, the PlayStation 3 is region free, and I don't think that you're going to have too much trouble playing the Japanese version for half the price. But if you must play the US version, this price probably isn't going to change too much in the future. Rainbow the Video Game is one of the last PlayStation 3 titles, so it might be beneficial to get it now rather than later, but the game doesn't really look too appealing and graphically satisfying for being such a late title. But hey, if you like Rambo, why not? But keep an eye on it just in case. Blitz the League 2 is one of the last Midway games before they shut down the studio, and Blitz used to be the premier arcade football experience before the NFL started to distance themselves from being such a dangerous sport. And this is actually one of the rare instances where the PlayStation 3 version is actually cheaper than the Xbox 360 version, and both seem to be cooling off, so keep an eye on this one because it might drop even further in the next couple of months. 
And the last game on my list right now is Africa. And this game was one of the first games that I ever reviewed on my channel. And you can see me in all my sweaty glory. This video still gets views. And Africa has always been a rare game and will probably cool off in the next couple of months. But I don't really think that this game will come back down to a more appropriate level soon enough. It's a unique game that has been selling for about $130, so I would definitely keep an eye on it if you're a fan of these types of games. So I find it kind of funny that PlayStation 3 game prices are going bonkers right now because GameCube prices are also going sky high at the same time and most people made the same reasoning and it's because game generations tend to spike after 20 years. The people who had the system when they were kids are old enough to spend money to buy their childhood back so game prices naturally increase. So that theory kind of holds true, but the PlayStation 3 is 7 years older than the GameCube, so why are prices going high right now instead of in the next couple of years? Well, it mostly has to do with the pandemic. Basically, the PlayStation 3 for casual people is close enough to a modern console if you can't get your hands on a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5. But also, a couple of months back, it was a speculation that PlayStation 3 would be the next big console to collect for. Uh, you had Spawnwave say that, hey, you should probably get on PlayStation 3 prices now. But what really kicked everything off into motion was the announcement that the PlayStation 3 store would close down. And this doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but the PlayStation 3 store had PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2 games, and PlayStation 3 games to download off of the store. But the PlayStation 5 only has PS5 and PS4 games. So if you wanted to play Einhander, for example, you couldn't pick it up cheap on the Sony store. You have to buy a physical copy now. And what happened to the physical copy of Einhander price? It's up to $225. It's being affected just the same way as the PlayStation 3. And so you're seeing prices just go straight up because now there's not really an option to play these games in a cheaper way. So a lot of people are really panicking to make sure that they have a physical version. But another thing is, is that the CMOS bomb was discovered in the PlayStation 3, 4, and 5. And basically all these PlayStations, they need to connect to the PlayStation network to authenticate. And that little battery keeps information on even when it's time to power off the system. And the issue is, is that the CMOS battery could eventually run out of juice. And right now it's not really a big deal because you can just replace the battery and then connect to the PS network. But what happens if the PS network is no longer available to authenticate the PlayStation and the battery is replaced at the same time? Well, the PlayStation won't play games. And the PlayStation 3 is affected the same way as the 4 and 5, but the PlayStation 3 will still be able to play physical games, uh, whereas the PlayStation 4 and 5 just might not work at all. So you can see why there is a mad panic to scoop up the PlayStation 3 games. And I think as more people catch wind of this and try to catch that wave, you're going to see prices come down a bit because I really have watched these prices go up and up and also paid attention to what's being listed on eBay. I actually considered selling some of my copies of PlayStation 3 games that were going up in price and I really got cold feet. But eventually what you're going to see is a lot of people are going to put up their games and then they're also going to undercut everybody causing the price to go down. So I think if people are patient, you're going to see a better price. And even with that news that the PlayStation Store isn't shutting down as expected, you still might have a lot of people be competitive with these games and try to catch good deals. So if you're on the fence about buying, I wouldn't buy right now, but I would definitely take a look at the games that you want to buy and really just keep an eye out for when a good game comes up because like if you look at 3d dot game heroes there's several copies available on ebay and like i said before people love to undercut each other to sell it faster but 
it's all relative and I hope that these videos give you a good idea of what to expect from video game prices in the future. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with those who might find it interesting. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for future content. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.